Module 4. In this module, we will discuss chicken behavior, pecking order, sounds, and communication. In this section, you will learn about behaviors, and it is very important to understand their whole social life and behaviors of the chickens. Chickens are very sensitive animals, very vulnerable, even to stress. It is important to understand their needs, their communication skills, their needs to live in a group, for example. And I will cover all these aspects to help you better understand how this animal needs to live, to live and how we humans must respect their needs in order to provide a secure shelter and prevent any form of animal cruelty. We're going to start with the basic needs of chicken. First of all, it is a gregarious animal. In other words, they have to live in a group where areas, urban hens are not allowed to have roosters according to municipal bylaws. Therefore, it is absolutely necessary that in our group of hens, a dominant hen emerges. We will always then have at least three to five hens and most municipal bylaws give us permission to have three to five hens in urban areas. If you live in a rural area, you're allowed, to, of course, to have a lot more, up to 100 in Quebec, and it varies from provinces to provinces in Canada. Many provinces are actually trying to level up those permissions to allow even more small-scale productions. Check your government agriculture website for more information and updates on these provincial regulations. Chickens have to live in a group. First of all, to feel safe and to express all their social activities in a group. You will often notice that often they will eat by imitation. Imitation is one of their learning behaviors. They will go grooming together and they will also protect themselves from predators by positioning themselves in a very precise way to make sure that there are no predators around that could surprise them. They are sensitive to, they are very sensitive animals. So you have to understand the picking order. For us, it may seem very cruel to see chickens pecking each other or being intimidate, intimidating to each other. But it, this is the case in many groups of animals because there is still an order. It takes place in very, very uh, large uh, species uh, of animals. We see it, by example, with wolves uh, and other groups. And in our hen's group, there will always be a dominant hen. So the dominant hen, let's say the hay, let's call her the alpha hen, will dominate, for example, our hen B, and B could dominate C and D. A hen uh, could also dominate the uh, hen E. The E is going to be, let's say, dominated by D or C. There's a kind of a dance going on where positions between hens will change depending on their health and also uh, their character. It's going to be affected uh, by the way and everything they eat. So the pecking order really, by example, will define who's going to have priority, access to the nesting area, who's going to have access to the best place on the perch, then it's also often the dominant hand that will present you with the more developed and prominent comb. You have to watch out for this because sometimes there are hands that becomes too aggressive. They're thinking that they are becoming the rooster. So when a hen becomes too aggressive and you see, for example, the growth of a ridge that is way too much permanent or feathers that could look like a rooster, there could indeed be a sex change. It's very, very rare, but it can happen and it's documented. And these chickens could even become so aggressive that unfortunately you would have to get rid of them. Among various chicken behaviors, the pecking order as I was explaining, our chickens will like to explore. Another aspect of their behavior is that a hen needs to work more than 50% of her time looking for food. Unlike many mammals, such as dogs and cats, we give them a bowl of food 
they will eat. The chicken, on the other hand, needs to explore and work and look for its food. This is why you will notice that very often she will do a mess around the feeding area. She will use her beak to get the feed out of the feeding uh, area and then she will have the pleasure to look for the grains on the ground to discriminate them. So later on I will talk about nutrition and we will also make a link with other feeding behaviors because a hen needs to develop an appetite. That is to say a phase where she will make every effort to find her food. Social behaviors is more developed in laying hens than in broilers because broilers do not live long enough to develop a good organization within the flock. Whether hens are raised in caged or free range, they will establish a complex structure or social relationships. Yes, you like to talk, I know. And they will establish rank, access to the nest, box, level their aggression higher towards the last hen, and then they can also rank towards different disturbing or threatening hen, for example. Feeding priorities and appropriation of the territory are part of the ranking order uh, behaviors. This social organization aims to reduce conflicts between them. The larger the flocks, the more subgroups and alliances are formed among the ends. You can see hands cooperating with each other, just as you can see them competing fiercely for food. The pecking order is not fixed either. As soon as mortality or disease strikes, the flock the social organization is all reviewed and redesigned. A sick hen may be rejected and pecked by other hens who may want to get rid of it and kill in order not to attract predators. This instinct is linked to their great capacity for survival and adaptation. I therefore always recommend isolating a sick hen from other hens not only for the risk of con contagion, but also for their own safety. Chickens tend to imitate and synchronize with each other. A rather fascinating behavior in this animal. Many social activities are done in groups such as boiling and preening the feathers or dust baiting. Chickens living in cages or in subgroups are used to feed at the same time. This behavior is taught uh, to demonstrate the social attraction that unites and secures them. A hen that is already full can return to eat if she notices one of her fellow chicken approaching the feeder, simply to follow and accompany her mate. Chickens tend to eat better and in larger quantities when they are in a group than uh, when they are alone. Those um, that are alone tend to get depressed and even let themselves die. Chickens are omnivorous. They will eat just about anything because they're really glutinous. They just love eating. They have a whole communication system. They have more than 40 vocalizations to communicate with each other. <laughs> of sense. Each one as charming as the next, which they can also interpret when produced by a congeneer. They also have the ability to distinguish the croaking of several males from each other. There are different categories of sense. Those that warn of the danger of predation, those that call for contact, sounds of belonging to the territory, sounds of identification, sounds calls for distress, calls for the for threat, for intimidation and submission, calls for mating, those to identify the nest, and also calls uh, after laying an egg, calls for feeding, calls for contentment. There are lots of vocals. Typically, in the morning, after the hen has laid her egg, they often make a song, the song of the hen that has just laid. They like to kind of express or point out that they have just laid their eggs. Some experts think 
that may they, they may do this to prevent predators. And among other, among other sounds, they can make cawing noise, they will also purr sometimes when they are pet, and they will also even shout for nothing if they are in an environment that really disturbs them or if they are in a too small enclosure. In summary, all of this to tell you that this is the animal that is easily sensitive to all kinds of stressors in our environment. And we will have to be careful to give them all the best conditions to make them comfortable in order to lay eggs while keeping in excellent health.